These days, when we think about the information that we have access to and how we access them from anywhere and almost everything we have, it's starting to get kind of scary. You think about it now. It's not just having information that's on your desktop that's locked down with your organizational passwords and from your physical security of your office. Nowadays, you have access to it through your smartphones and through your tablets and you're accessing through Wi-Fi and it's really getting to be a point where we're putting far too much trust in the technology that we have around us. That's okay if we understand it, but in many cases, sometimes people don't. And I wanted to just demonstrate how simple it really is to get into these devices, which then gives us a whole cornucopia of access to information. So let's start with something as simple as an Android phone. I love these things. I love these things because most people don't realize just how powerful they are, and more importantly, how weak they can be. So let me give you an example. In this particular device here, um, this is all connected up to our Office 365 account and I have access to all my data uh, directly from it. And that's not a great thing if you think about it, if I could get into this phone. Now, just so happens that my phone has a pin lock requirement. Uh, it's pushed down by the EAS policies on the exchange, um, which is supposed to protect me, right? Well, not so much. Uh, it's designed to say that, hey, after a certain amount of failures, I believe it's five or 10 times, it's gonna automatically wipe the device to prevent people from trying to breach into that system in case I lost the phone. But the reality is, is that when we look at these devices, well, it's far more uh, uh, possible to access these than you would think. Uh, as an example, if we take a look here, right at the bottom of this, there's this uh, micro USB connector. Well, that connector is not just for powering the device or exchanging some data we can actually do interesting things like plug in keyboards, and not a lot of people understand that. I can take something as simple as an OTG cable here, which has this ability to take a USB to micro USB connector, and I can plug this right into the device. I also can go and take something as simple as a $20 um, uh, board that acts as a keyboard and plug that in. And when I do that, what this automatically will do for me is allow me to, well, brute force the device by entering in codes one by one. Now, this is actually kind of funny because when we're going and running this, we can start and go 0001, 0002, and continue that on and do all 10,000 possibilities that are in, within a phone. Uh, but the reality is, is that the world doesn't work like that. People aren't going to be doing that. Normally they're gonna have special patterns or ideas. If you think about it, there's a lots of simple patterns that people always do. Maybe they're going zero, 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 maybe. But the reality is it's probably something like the four corners or something they're used to diagonally. What ends up, there's a ton of research that's online that's been provided by security researchers on the most common pins that are being used mostly for being able to breach into ATM systems to you know, get people's money if they can get their cards. But the reality is we can leverage that type of research to do the same thing. If I was to go and try to do this on this Android phone, every time I would try this, I could do it five times and then it would fail. Now it should wipe it, but because I'm going through the micro USB adapter, it doesn't actually follow those policies, which means I can do it as many times as I like. And in this case, what we would do then is we would just plug it in and allow it to brute and just keep going. But we take advantage of that research where we know the commonalities. Even if I was to do it in sequence, I could use the birthday paradox and chances are I would be able to cut the time in half. So I happen to know that if I was calculating this, after every five failures, this, the phone makes me wait 30 seconds. It'll take about 16 hours to go through every single uh, permutation. But with the birthday paradox, that cuts it down about half, which means I can do it in about eight hours. Well, for my research, I've actually found that when you actually use those uh, common pins, well, it ends up that we can break it down to usually within a couple hours. And uh, that means that by getting physical access to the phone, let it run for a little while, it's gonna have the ability to do it. So let me just show you that right now. I just take in my OTG adapter and I have it with my little code that's on here on the board and I plug it in. And as you see, screen turns off and then it starts executing. So there you go, the system's been breached. In just a few minutes, I was able to break into this phone by just brute forcing it and finding the pin that matches up. Now this could take hours, depending on what the pin was, but by using that research to find what the most common pins are, there's a very good chance it won't take too long because most people, they're not thinking about security, they're thinking of make, making it easier for themselves. Well, that's to my advantage, not to theirs. Ultimately, we'll be able to get in and do more with this phone. And in a, later in this uh, presentation, I'm gonna demonstrate for you how we can go even deeper and get even more information. By having access to the phone, I have all the apps and can read their email and do everything else, but we can actually get far more information that can be useful as an attacker 
giving us access to all that information that belongs in your business.